I am a budget PC builder, someone who always tries to get their clients the cheapest possible component, which still is decent and worth it. However, I fully recommend you go out there and overspend on your motherboard on a high-end game PC. And in this video, surprisingly, I am reviewing not only an 800 bucks motherboard, but a whole series of motherboards, the Asus ROG Apex motherboard lineup. And I'm doing that while not being sponsored, not being endorsed, Asus people don't even know I exist. They probably dislike me if they know I exist because I usually very much don't recommend their overpriced stuff. But this is a motherboard made for overclockers and for people who actually care about their enthusiast hardware. So of course, it has my recommendation. With that said, let's get into the video. Now, welcome back at Amazon PSUs. And what we have here today is a Z890 Apex. Now the Apex lineup, no matter the socket, no matter the brand, Intel or AMD, from Asus ROG, is always worth buying on a high-end gaming system because it's the best motherboard out there from a purely performance standpoint. It's the motherboard that will always guarantee you the highest overclocks, even though it may not be the motherboard with the highest compatibility or with the most features. What do I mean? Well, allow me to expand. On the Apex series, you generally find just two dim slots. You may be thinking, hey, we are in full DDR5 shortage, so that's pretty good, right? I don't have to buy four sticks. But with dual stick and a single dual channel option available, you simply get the shorter possible distance from the CPU to the motherboard. And if you actually want to be a nerd about it and you watch the motherboard in the back and see how the traces go from the socket to the RAM, you will see the traces are very short. And dual slot motherboards are always better RAM overclockers than more slots ones. Even if you're able to get the same overclock, you will get latency gains by running just two sticks and by having the sticks closer to the motherboard. That's the reason why, for example, a Chinese motherboard like the Chinue Night Devil B650, a completely random example, but it's a very popular video of mine, the performance there was actually better than name brands like Asus motherboards with four slots. That very cheap 90 bucks AliExpress motherboard was a better buy for performance than more expensive stuff. Very simple design. If you take a look at an Apex motherboard, okay, the back is insane. If you're into hardware, you will see so many extra chips and the way the lanes are routed is just, this is perfection. This is peak engineering and it comes out at a very expensive price. However, I think if you're not buying it, at the full price, then it's definitely, definitely worth it. How would you do that? Well, for example, you could be buying something like this close to the end of life. Now, that may not be the smartest choice overall, but today I've did just that. So you will see on the channel, or you may already have on the channel, a build with a Core Ultra 9 285K, fully overclocked with 8000 MHz DDR5. Getting 8000 MHz RAM to RAM stable at a lower latency and being able to tune your stuff on top of it is something very few motherboards can actually do properly. And the Apex is one of the very few that are able to do that. This literally works out of the box. So if you go into the BIOS and just enable the Intel 200S boost, this will run a full XMP, 8,000 mega transfers per second on the RAM, and you will also get your CPU slightly overclocked via the D2D and NGU, like I showed in my videos previously, automatically. So even if you're not, an enthusiast overclocker, but if you just want the maximum performance, this is the easiest way to get it. You just buy this motherboard, plug everything in, and then have it run. Now we are basically halfway through the video and I still haven't covered the physical layout of the motherboard because I think the reason why you should buy it is related to the use case that you're gonna be having for it, not to how it's done. But now I think it's time to actually go over it because if you're into hardware, if you're an enthusiast, this thing is a dream. So the box is amazing, it opens up very cool and then you just see the motherboard there with some pretty cool peel-offs to do. The motherboard has it all. It has VRM heatsinks and heatsink surrounding the socket all around. However, that's probably the only small issue this motherboard has is if you have a massive cooler, you may encounter a little bit of compatibility issues trying to mount it. I actually had that with my Sudoku cooler over there and uh, I had to rotate it a little, but it's no big deal. If you just rotate the tubes, you're gonna find a way to make it fit. If you're going with custom water blocks, direct dye, you should have no problems at all. Just make sure you don't get something that's massive because again, we have so many heatsinks they kind of get in the way. Another thing is you get in the box the little fan for the motherboard, and in my build, I wasn't able to plug it just because it's right in the middle. But if you're into very high RAM overclocking, you do want some airflow over there. However, in a high-end configuration, you're gonna have your PC airflow going over it. So you don't really need the fan, 
But uh, by including the fan, what Azus is doing is if you're using this for benchmarking overclocking on a bench where you have zero airflow, you can use that fan, which screws in very fast, and you're good to go. Also, if you have, for example, some kind of fully water-cooled PC with not much airflow at all, the fan can come in handy for sure. Feature-wise, I really recommend you go on the website and read them, but a short list is you have power on a reset button, you have, a, of course, a code reader, the heatsink for the Gen 5 M.2 is the best one I've seen ever. Also, the secondary heatsinks for your secondary drives are insanely good. The I.O. in the back is amazing. You don't have any USB 2.0 ports, but you still have a PS2 port, surprisingly. And you do have very good connectivity. Triple USB-C ports, 20 gig one also, 5 gigabit LAN. This thing has it all. You're not compromising anywhere. BIOS flashback, BIOS reset button, they're all on the back. They're perfect for overclocking. They are the dream daily driver because if you have any kind of issue with the BIOS, you can just flash it back in two minutes via the Q-Flash. You have endless connectivity inside, dual USB-C internal connections, dual USB 3.0 internal connections, dual USB 2.0 internal connections. You have endless fan headers. You can literally not even run a fan controller in this motherboard. You have endless RGB connectors. You don't need a controller for those either unless you're running a lot. And uh, the placement of every single connector in the motherboard is the best one it can be. Also has an additional 8-pin connector to power more on the PCIe for some extreme overclocking. It's the perfect motherboard. The motherboard is also slightly cut uh, on the left side in the middle and it lights up in RGB. The RGB on the top is gorgeous. It's only in white, but I think it's the best looking motherboard in the market. It's very heavy because of all the heat sinks it has and it has a very cool design even on the back of it, which you're never going to see again after mounting it. But we enthusiasts do like it. Who is this motherboard for? Why should you buy it? Should you pay full price? This is a motherboard which comes in at 800 bucks. I bought it for six and I'm very happy about my buying decision. I would buy it at 800 bucks at launch for sure. If I was someone very into overclocking, very into hardware, or even if I was just someone who wanted the most out of their hardware, because even if you're not a pro overclocker, this motherboard is so much better than anything else on the market, which is gonna give you the edge, even if you don't really want to mess with manual setting yourself. So you can just trust the motherboard to do what you want and it's gonna do it right. So surprisingly, yes, I do recommend the Apex series from Asus, actually the whole series across every socket. I've had probably 15 of those and I never had a single one fail me. Now, please Asus, Maybe send me an email or something. No, pro you probably don't because I don't usually like your products. But you guys, maybe, drop a like and subscribe. You can also now become a member to support me because, yeah, brands don't really like me. And uh, with that said, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.